this video is going to serve kind of as a combination of a how-to guide for the basics of cosplay as far as coming up with concepts, uh, what materials you might need, and different ways to get started, as well as kind of like a progress journal for the cosplay project I'm currently working on. As some of you may know, I'm working on the heavy armor for the Grey Wardens, then I'm going to kind of use different parts from the different games like Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, Dragon Age Inquisition, the parts that I like to kind of create this set of armor. And the way I'm going to be going about it is through foam armor smithing, is what I guess some of the higher up, more professional people refer to as. And I'm by no means a professional when it comes to cosplaying. I mean, the last project I did, I did fairly well as a first timer. I have it like right up here. I actually created the Team Fortress 2 Pyro outfit with the Last Breath helmet and I did a fairly good job I feel for a first timer and really as daunting as it may seem to some is definitely something if you enjoy it or are interested in it should definitely get into it. Uh, for starters what cosplay is for anybody who may not know and may even just be a little uh, unsure from what a lot of people have seen it's really just the easy way to put it Halloween except for you do it any other day you want to and there's no candy. Which I know for a lot of you, especially myself, candy is kind of the selling point of Halloween. But the idea is, you think of a character, whether it be from a movie, a book, a video game, anything that you really like and you would like to kind of dress up as. That's all really all cosplaying is. And the number one rule to cosplay is don't let anybody tell you that you are not the right ethnicity, the right height, the right build, the right gender doesn't matter if you want to be the character be the character regardless of what anybody else tells you because that is the point of cosplaying is being your favorite character and enjoying yourself above all else and there's no shame in buying any a cosplay outfit there's people out there who make and sell this kind of stuff you may not have the skill and you're maybe afraid to really get into it and kind of learn how to make cosplay props or outfits that's fine again there's no shame in that or you may just have the money and not have the time because, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. And again, that's another perfect example of when people tend to buy cosplay outfits. And once again, there's no shame in doing that. The idea is, once again, just dress up as a character you like, enjoy yourself, and that's it. Now, if you actually want to get into making props and outfits, there's many different ways of going about it. The way I'm going to be discussing is through like armor smithing through using foam because that's kind of what my project is going to be. There's many other different ways and the one thing I would definitely recommend as a resource, the internet is wonderful. There is millions of different guides on how to make different forms of props, outfits, armor, whether it be through foam, cloth, leather, you name it, it's out there. Definitely go ahead and search through YouTube, search through the internet. There's many different videos and guides that will assist you if you are serious about getting into cosplay. And I definitely would recommend it. Again, this is just going to be a basic guide with some concepts and show you materials and over time maybe show you how I did things, but it's not going to be that much more informative than that. You might want to go to other videos for that purpose. Uh, but yeah, the first step of course is to choose the character you want to be. Make sure to have lots of reference pictures. Uh, the higher quality, the bigger size, the better, so you can really look at the nitty gritty details, especially if you're really into making sure that your outfit is absolutely accurate. It's gonna be very much important. So as you can see on this side up here, like I said, I'm gonna be doing the uh, Grey Warden Heavy Armor from Dragon Age series. That's really what I wanna do. With the inclusion of the Starfang Longsword Blade, as well as a shield. So up on the side, you'll see different uh, pictures I'll have as different reference pictures to kind of go with. There's a lot of people who've already done it very well, and it's, but it's still something I kind of want to do as a cosplay project. So once you have the idea, you have all the reference pictures, uh, there's a few ways to go about it. Sometimes there may not be templates that exist, but you definitely want to go ahead and if possible come up with a template. A template is probably the easiest way to go about it because if you have a template, it kind of keeps you from making mistakes on the material you use for the final project. For instance, like foam, making mistakes in the foam, and then you're constantly just throwing it out. So templates are definitely a great way to start. So once you have an idea of what you're working with, there's many different ways to go about it. Uh, you can go ahead and get cardboard. 
to go ahead and use to make your templates. Uh, there's also, I am not entirely sure what the name of this paper is. It's a thicker kind of brown paper. I know that people kind of use for even just cloth templates, or in this case, I actually got this out of the packaging that they sent the foam to me in, but it works as well. Uh, there's a different technique that you would use for that. Um, there's another way that people use this, even manila folders, people I've heard make templates out of that. And as far as armor's concerned, one of the ways, at least with this uh, brown paper I was talking about before, or even what people do is they'll go ahead and tape, but if you really want an outfit that's more form-fitting, you would go ahead and place that brown paper all around you or tape all around you. Sometimes what people will do is they'll go ahead and buy really basic white t-shirts to wear over themselves, put tape over it, so that way when they cut it, it gets a nice, um, sturdy template to kind of work with. But that's if you want something that's more form-fitting, especially if you kind of go based off of like body armor parts and whatnot. Uh, once you have the template, then of course you need just other materials as well. Uh, actually, real quick, as far as the template for the Starfang is concerned, when it comes to measurements, measurements are going to be kind of difficult when you're trying to equate a picture that you're looking at to something that's your size, which is why you'd use one of those techniques. But as far as props are concerned, it's kind of hard unless you actually have weapons to work with. I don't. All I have is this uh, prop lightsaber. So as far as the length of Starfang is concerned, I figure realistically it's probably going to be to the tip of the lightsaber to about this point on the hilt as far as how long the blades are going to be. It might even be a, bit, a little bit longer. And as far as the hilt, so this hilt seems like it'd be a little bit short so I'd want to lengthen it. But this is what I would be using as a reference as far as how I'm going to use Starfang in regards to the size and length of the blade and the hilt and all that other good stuff. But once you have the templates and everything else considered, of course you need supplies. So if you're trying to, with certain ideas such as armor, like the Grey Warren armor that I'm doing, there's certain parts that are not going to actually be connected, but you need to find a way to fasten it to yourself, keep it on you, and kind of keep it together. That's where you want to go ahead and get, in this case I have you know, elastic available, as well as a crap load of uh, belt buckles, which I actually got for a dollar, which was a sweet deal, because I'm not even going to be using all these, but for future projects, if I want to, eh, I got it. And you can kind of just use the buckles in place of, on the armor, such as the foam, to go ahead and, again, fasten everything kind of together. Uh, and I'll probably, while making the armor, show how you can go about doing that. Uh, as far as glues are concerned, I mean, it's still hotly debated, at least when it comes to uh, EVA foam, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, how to really get that to stick together and stay together. A lot of people still swear by hot glue. I've used hot glue in the past, and it's been hit or miss depending on some of the things that I've been working on. And there's also contact cement. Now, there's many different kinds of contact cement that are available. Uh, this I was able to get at Walmart. But there's a lot of people, instead of the DAP Weldwood, they'll go with uh, more widely known as Barge. Now, Barge, they no longer sell what you'll see a lot of more famous cosplayer sales in, in stores. Uh, they have a newer formula, which if anybody out there has used that newer formula, the blue tin can of Barge, and it works just well, please let me know, because that's actually something I'm looking into. Because in the Lowe's, the Home Depot's, Harbor Freight's, and places around here, they don't come in the classic kind of yellow and red tin can that you'll see a lot of more famous cosplayers and armor smiths use. But anyways, yes, contact cement. There's a way to kind of apply it, which I'll more likely go into detail on other videos. I have a small amount for testing here, but it should also work for piecing together a lot of other things. Kind of apply it, wait for about five minutes or so till it gets kind of like tacky, and then it's when you kind of piece the parts together, hold it there for a moment, and then it's going to be very hard to pull apart. But that's how you're going to piece together all of those little parts that you made from the template together to kind of form whatever your cosplay might be. Uh, now when working with foam, what you want to do is make sure, I don't have it with me at the moment to show you, but you want a heat gun of some kind uh, to go ahead and seal the foam. Because what happens is there's a lot of little tiny pores that some of you can kind of see, and it makes it very hard for the paint to kind of stick to it, whether regardless of really what any kind of paint you want to. It's not a proper service. So the way you want to seal it is by using that hot, uh, that heat gun 
to go ahead and just go over it a little bit so it has a kind of a sheen to it and that's when you'll know that it's set up properly and ready to be coated and one of the ways you want to go ahead and do that again another popular form a lot of people swear by is get a can of Plasti Dip. Now right here I have black Plasti Dip. There's comes in clear and other colors as well depending on what you need. Uh, this is usually going to be the base coat though so it really doesn't matter too much what color you want it to be because you'll be painting over uh, with other coats for the main color itself. But it's a multi-purpose rubber coating that you can put on your foam that gives it a lot of that durability and also allows it to uh, to allow any kind of paint whether it be acrylic or spray paint to stick onto the foam without issue. Of course you'll need different tools. Uh, I actually got this for Harbor Freight for less than a dollar. It's a three piece utility with glass scraper set. I obviously don't need the glass scraper, but what you want is basically the blades. The blades are gonna be absolutely important for cutting into the foam. Now the problem is when you're cutting into the foam with these blades, they get dull very quickly. So if you can get a sharpener or, I mean this is a super cheap kit and a lot of these actually the blades can break off so if one of the blades becomes dull snap it off continue on with the next blade so there's many different ways to handle that kind of situation as it arises because it will happen often you'll notice that it gets dull uh, rulers of course your best friend if you're trying to go for exact measurements and you can go ahead and either buy I know they make like a rubber bendy kind of ruler that goes around or another trick that I've learned from watching like evil Ted Smith and a few other cosplayers, or just costume designers, not necessarily cosplayers themselves, is you can go ahead and use what's left of EVA foam, a small chunk of it, to create that kind of bendy ruler on your own using just a normal ruler. And then you can use that for when you're really trying to get like curves around the arms and whatnot. But as I kept saying, and I haven't shown yet, EVA foam, this is gonna be like the bread and butter, the main part, at least if you're doing foam armor cosplaying. And it's most famous for Mass Effect, I'm sure you've seen, for people who are going as Shepard or even just other people. Based on, there's two different kinds. I'm not sure what this one is called. Uh, it's going to be kind of like the uh, glare coming off of it. But as you can see, it kind of has that carbon fiber look to it. Um, see if it says on here by chance. No, it does not. Um, I made the mistake of buying a set of this off of Amazon first, and it wasn't a bad deal for how much I got. I got 24 square feet total of foam in just this one package alone. Uh, but it cost me, with like shipping and handling everything off Amazon, $27. And the way I would recommend doing it, I didn't find out until later, if you ha have a Harbor Freight near you, I'm not sure if they sell it online. If they do, you're lucky. But for only $9, instead of getting like the six sheets uh, or the six tiles of foam that come in here, you only get four tiles, but it's only $9 to get it. So, I mean, that's really cheap to get that kind of EVA foam, and it's about the same quality as the one I'm holding right now. So, I mean, if you put it together, you get eight tiles, which is going to be two more than what this package is, for still about seven bucks after tax or so less than what I just paid for this one. So you live and you learn, but definitely if you have the opportunity and you need foam, Harbor Freight, 10 bucks, you really can't beat it. Or maybe you can, but I haven't seen it. If you have, let me know. But once you have all that figured out, you have all your supplies, because I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything at this point, if I did, forgive me, is kind of get started with that. Uh, I will go ahead and make a video later, as far as, like I said, progress and making some of the pieces. I may not show you every single step of the way, uh, but this is a continued project. It's something I'm very passionate about because, as I've kind of said before, and I don't want to get like too crazy personal because some people don't even really want to hear it, uh, I got a lot going on in life. I mean, work is very, very stressful. There's a lot of things going on I can't necessarily discuss, and it's just not a lot of fun. It's very emotionally draining. I come home just feeling like absolute crap. And I also have responsibilities to obviously my family and helping them out. And I don't even have a chance to see any of my friends. I don't have a car. So I'm kind of just stuck in place. And sometimes you get a little a bit of cabin fever and there's not a whole lot that you really do. So I need something to kind of keep me sane and going, which is part of the reason why I'm doing this project, because I love being creative, I love kind of creating this kind of stuff, 
and having fun with it, but also kind of keeps my mind off of a lot of the stress at work and just other things that kind of come up. And that's why I want to go ahead and first off thank Rasmus if you're watching. Uh, you contributed almost the entire amount that I've asked for from people to kind of get this project even started. As well as Scary Drew, you also contributed funds to this project. Uh, total so far is $100. And you can definitely make cost by outfits a lot cheaper than this. This is just to get a lot of the tools I didn't even have to begin with. Once you have the tools and you're doing future cosplays, then all you're buying is just basic materials. And then you're probably looking at anywhere between, I'd say, 30 to maybe even at most like $60 to create cosplay outfits. So once you have the tools to begin with, it, it's all much easier and cheaper from there. But I definitely could use some other tools to really get some of the awesome details into it, such as like I really could use a rotary tool and some bits to kind of shave down and kind of edge certain to really give it that, again, accurate look, to really give it that unique just presentation just looks a lot nicer than probably what I'll come up with. So I'm still open for donations. If you would like to go ahead and donate to this project, help me out here. I greatly appreciate it. Not expected. And again, I'm not like, oh, you have to. If you're one of my followers or watchers or viewers, it's something you need to do. Otherwise, I'll hate you. No, I appreciate the fact that anybody's even just watching these videos. But I could definitely still use the help. There's still some tools that I could use. They are not, uh, they're not exactly a necessity, but they will, again, improve the final product, uh, product project, the final version of what I'm making. Kind of stumbling over myself at this point. So the link will be down below. So if you'd like to contribute or donate any kind of cash to this, again, I greatly appreciate it. I'll definitely make sure that people know that you went ahead and helped me out unless you prefer to keep it private. I will respect that as well. Uh, but once again, yeah, that's about it. So if you're interested in cosplaying, I'd say go for it. There's no reason why you shouldn't. It is very fun. It is a nice challenge. It's not too stressful. It's like that nice kind of level that makes it interesting and you feel like good as you're doing it, especially when you get to the final product. It is so rewarding, especially when other people comment sometimes on how awesome what you've created looks. So definitely get into it. Again, don't let anybody tell you, oh, you can't be this, you can't be that. Screw that. Have fun with it. Be whoever you want to be. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. And of course, as far as plotting, planning, and getting materials, it's not that time consuming to get that portion of it done. And it's really not too expensive unless you have absolutely nothing. And then even then, I said you're talking about maybe at most for certain things, $100 maybe starting off. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of money for me, but to some other people out there, it might not be so much. But definitely enjoy it. Uh, look out for future videos. Again, I'm going to be doing progress as far as making some of this stuff. Probably the first thing that seems to me to be the easiest is going to be creating the Starfang Longsword. All right, you could probably hear Edmund's toy in the background, and Edmund as well, kind of multitasking. Of course, putting more emphasis on watching my son than I am working on this. But as you can see here, I mean, I already got some work. I already used up one tile to create the two sides of the blade of the Starfang Longsword from Dragon Age Origins. That's going to be the sword my uh, heavy, warden, uh, heavy Armor Grey Warden is going to wield. So I figured I'd kind of show that off. So I went ahead, as you can see here, with the piece of cardboard, I cut out the template. And I tried to make it as symmetrical as possible. And then from there, I went ahead and cut out the two pieces of foam. And a neat little trick I learned on the internet is you can kind of see how these runic etches are in the blades. They're not perfect, but I try to get them as close as possible. The way you do that is you just do a slight little cut into the foam itself. And then when you use the heat gun, which you're going to be using anyways to go ahead and make it more... To kind of seal it off so you can go ahead and put the plastic dip and paint on it later. It also makes... It, it causes the foam to kind of spread, so it kind of creates those etchings that you can kind of see. And there is the first piece of the hilt that I'm kind of pointing to. Uh, I kind of cut that and used it the contact cement. Now, it's under a lot of strain because of how small around it is. Uh, but it seems to be holding pretty well. So, as far as people saying contact cement is the way to go, I mean, it's actually probably doing a lot better than, honestly, the hot glue would of keeping that together. That's only the first piece. There's still quite a few parts that kind of make up the main hilt that holds those two blades together. And also there's going to be the tiny, well not tiny, but um, a decent sized piece of PVC pipe that I'm going to use. It's going to go through there. It's going to be kind of the core and then go with the hilt. 
and putting it all together is kind of going to give it that solid foundation so it's not like wobbling all over the place. But yeah, I figured I'd go ahead as part of this uh, talk about cosplay and even saying that it was supposed to be a progress a journal. Well, here you go. Here's some of the progress I've made just today in a matter of uh, a couple hours. So yeah. And yeah, until next time. I killed the would-be god who unleashed the blight upon the world. He had a dragon too. Then I leave the world in good hands. The passage of years.